And welcome back to Face the Nation, page two. Joining us now, the former deputy director of the CIA, Michael Morell. He also served on that advisory panel that made the recommendations last month about what changes uh, would be needed uh, at the National Security Agency. Uh, Mr. Morell, thank you uh, for joining it's us good this to be morning. Here, Bob. I, I want to ask you first I mean, uh, Chairman Rogers. Uh, made some interesting disclosures this morning suggesting that there is some reason to believe the Russians may have been uh, helping uh, Edward Snowden and also expressing real concern about safety uh, for the coming Olympics. So uh, just give me your reaction to that. So I share the chairman's concern um, about uh, what the Russian intelligence services may be doing with Mr. Snowden. Um, I, don't have, um, I don't have any particular evidence but one of the things that, uh, that I point to when I talk about this um, is that the disclosures that have been coming recently um, are very sophisticated in their content and sophisticated in their timing, um, almost too sophisticated for Mr. Snowden to be deciding on his own. And it uh, seems to me he might be getting some help. And what about uh, the coming Olympics? Uh, are you concerned about the lack of cooperation that the, uh, the Russians seem to be giving us uh, so on there's security? A, uh, so there's a long history of uh, cooperation between nations who are hosting um, an Olympics and uh, the United States government and the United States intelligence community in particular. Um, and we did not get that cooperation uh, with, with the Russians. Um, so I share the chairman's concern about the safety of the Olympics going Why forward. Why do you think that is? Is it just the Russians being the Russians or uh, is there something else here? I think fundamentally they don't want to admit that uh, they don't have complete control here and that they might need some help. Uh, let's talk about the president's uh, speech. Uh, you were on the panel that made recommendations. How many did you make? What, 40? 46. 46 recommendations on things that could be done. Uh, you heard the president's speech. What do you think uh, the challenge is now for him? I think the president um, said two very important things. One was that uh, um, the threats to this nation are significant, that intelligence has never been more important in dealing with those threats, that the men and women of the NSA uh, are patriots, that um, the 215 program was legal and fully authorized and there wasn't any abuse. And the program needs to continue for the protection of the nation. That was one thing he said. The other thing he said was that uh, there is a potential risk here to privacy and civil liberties that we need to take seriously. And American history has plenty of examples of why we need to take it seriously. And I think the changes that he announced were significant. Um, some of them will take some, some time to be implemented, but some of them are in place today as we speak right here. And one is the, uh, one is the requirement to get a court order uh, to query the 215 database. I think the real challenge going forward, Bob, is that there, there are many ways to square this circle. There are many ways to accomplish both the national security piece of this and the privacy and civil liberties piece. Some of those ways will put one of those two more at risk than other ways. And I think the challenge here is for the administration and the Congress to find the best approach that minimizes the impact on national security as we work to improve privacy and civil liberties. Do you, uh, Chairman Rogers has said, and said again this morning, there have been no abuses. Senator Udall says there has. Do you know of any abuses? So there has been a handful of cases, literally a handful, where NSA employees have um, looked into the database inappropriately, um, looked at boyfriends or girlfriends, um, in every one of those cases, they were dealt with appropriately, and um, um, I, I believe actually some of them may have been fired. Um, but that's the limited abuse that has taken place. There has been no systematic abuse. There has been no, no political abuse. Um, it has been minor, very minor. Do you, uh, why did your panel recommend that uh, this great trove of telephone numbers, this giant phone book that the uh, NSA has, uh, why did you recommend that be put in, in private hands? And I ask that in light of the recent uh, messes that have come up with Target and, uh, and also with Neiman Marcus, where all of this information has been hacked, to, hacked into. Why isn't the government uh, better capable of, of protecting this stuff than, than private? Um, the government um, 
the government in the NSA case showed it was not capable of protecting classified mm -hmm. information. Mm -hmm. Um, and I happen to know some, some industries in the private sector who, who do a phenomenal job of protecting their data, financial institutions, for example. Um, so I think the government actually has some things it can learn from the private sector about how to protect data. Uh, what do you think is the most immediate thing uh, that needs to be done right here? What's the first thing the president needs to do? I think he's done it, which is to require a warrant for NSA to query the database. And that how do you keep place. that from slowing down this process? There might be some times when you come upon information, you need to act on it right now. Right, and there is an emergency provision so that if you need to act on it immediately, um, you can bypass uh, the court and uh, go query the data um, and have the court look at it later. So there is that emergency provision. Now I know that Chairman Feinstein and Chairman Rogers of the intelligence committees have uh, pointed out that's, that uh, some cases it's taken nine days to get things done. That's too long. The court's got to move faster, and that's one of the things that has to be looked at is how do we make sure the court can move as fast as it can move. I want to get you on record for one thing because there seems to be some disagreement. Some say that if the government had the capabilities before 9-11 that it has now, it could have prevented 9-11. Yes. Do you think that's true? Yes, I do. And um, quite frankly, I've been criticized uh, a little bit for saying that. And here's what I meant, Bob, when I said that. Um, if the program were in place before 9-11, I believe it would prevent 9-11. And by the program, I mean two things. I mean NSA's ability to query the database, which would have allowed NSA to find one of the 9-11 hijackers in California and the part of the program where NSA shares such information with the FBI. If both of those pieces had been in place, 9-11 would have been prevented by this program. How badly do you think our national security has been harmed by the disclosures uh, by Edward Snowden? I believe this is the worst disclosures in the history of the U.S. intelligence community. I agree with Chairman Rogers that it will cost billions and billions of dollars to repair the damage. And are they repairing the damage? Uh, are there steps going on now? Uh, are, th are they doing things in different ways? And I guess the other part of that question is, uh, are the other guys doing things in a different way because of these disclosures? So even before I left government in August, um, uh, we were watching um, the adversaries change their approach as a result of the disclosures. Um, so they moved very quickly to adjust to uh, the collection that we were doing against them. And um, I don't know it, but I would imagine my former colleagues are working aggressively to adjust as well. How has this affected the morale of uh, people who do this kind of work? I think um, it has affected the morale in a negative way, particularly at NSA. I thought one of the most effective things the president did uh, in the speech was to compliment the work of the men and women of NSA. And I think it was very important for the country to hear that, and I think it was very important for the employees of NSA to hear that from their commander-in-chief. Mr. Morell, I want to thank you for being with us this morning, and we're going to see a lot more of you uh, starting tomorrow. Mike Morell will be joining CBS News as a contributor to all our broadcasts. So welcome aboard, and we'll be back thank in you, one Bob. minute thank with you. our panel.